Portland, it's a beautiful day. <sighs> you know, some days it's challenging, you know, to do those things that you normally want to do without some effort or some struggle. And do you react to that or do you just simply take it as normal? You know, one of the things that you learn in time is that nothing remains the same, is that there's always a process of change and development going on. The plants grow and once they bloom, they blossom, which is good. But then the blooms wilt eventually. And so too sometimes I think people's faith or recognition of the reality of time in their life causes some people to be discouraged or to lose hope, to lose their faith, to become discouraged. And it's a gradual process. It never happens immediately. It happens a little bit at a time. So you don't notice that you're becoming less vibrant or less alive. Maybe even a little down. <laughs> Those are seasons. It's okay. Sometimes there is a process of decay in order so that renewal of life, renewing of your faith, renewing of your joy and peace, of your long-suffering, of your meekness, of your kindness, of your tenderness will happen in its season and in its timing that God has for you to minister to others. Sometimes you may find yourself down and out, or a little sad, or like some of my plants every now and then, <laughs> wilted. <laughs> When you feel that way, maybe add a little water and a little sunshine. In my utmost, the account with persecution, but I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Matthew 5:39. These verses reveal the humiliation of being a Christian. Interesting. Think about that one. Think very carefully about what's being said. These verses reveal the humiliation of being a Christian. Naturally, if a man does not hit back, it is because he is a coward. Oh, of course. I mean, if somebody hits you, you have to defend yourself. But spiritually, if a man does not hit back, it is a manifestation of the Son of God in him. Think about that. What Chambers is saying in utmost is, if you strike back, then that is what? Correct? But according to Chambers, he says, spiritually, if a man does not hit back, it is a manifestation of the Son of God in him. When you are insulted, you must not only not resent it, but make it an occasion to exhibit the Son of God. If somebody spites you or says all manner against you, do you manifest the Son of God in you? Or do you manifest your defense of yourself in you? You cannot imitate the disposition of Jesus. It is either there or it is not. You can't know until you've been there what it is that you will do. I know personally for myself, I have already been challenged that way. There have been times where someone has offended me and even struck me or even hit me or put a gun in my face. <laughs> and guess what I did, you know, in some of those occasions. Most of them I simply, God had already prepared me and given me the ability to not respond in a fearful or a antagonistic way, but to just simply look back at them and to share Jesus with them in a loving way and to not respond or to not defend myself because after all, what defense have I if I already have eternal life and they might not. So, 
you either will react by God preparing you for that moment in a positive way to reveal Jesus, or you're going to do like most people do. Think that you have to exercise your rights, your privileges, your defense, and to do something when God says no. To the saint, personal insult becomes the occasion of revealing the incredible sweetness of the Lord Jesus. It is our opportunity to show that he is the one living inside us. The teaching of the Sermon on the Mount is not do your duty, but do what is not your duty. It is not your duty to go the second mile. It is not your normal reaction to turn the other cheek. But Jesus says, if, and it's an important if, if we are his disciples, we shall always do these things. And if a man asks you to go one mile, you go the second. If he strikes you on the right cheek, you turn the other. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, recently I just had a person tell me, which I was dumbfounded. I've never heard anybody make up this excuse before. But they said, you only have two cheeks. <laughs> and I said, that's not the point of the scripture. It's not that you get struck on the right cheek and then the left and then you can hit him back. Come on. <laughs> Oh, that was the dumbest excuse I ever heard, but sure enough, somebody on the web told me that. Naturally, I responded in love. <laughs> there will be no spirit of... Jesus says if we are disciples, we will always do these things. There will be no spirit of, oh well, I cannot do anymore. I've been so misrepresented and so misunderstood. <laughs> Every time I insist upon my rights, I hurt the Son of God. Whereas I can prevent Jesus from being hurt if I take the blow myself. That is the meaning of filling up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. It, that's a real interesting King James way of saying, filling up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ. What it means is that you're participating in the same manner and the same way that Jesus himself suffered, died, and then was risen from the dead. Is that... God told us, God spoke to us, Jesus said bluntly, if they have persecuted the master, so too will they do the same to you. In other words, expect it, prepare for it, and be ready. Because then you will fulfill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ, that which has already been accomplished, that Jesus has gone before you and laid an example of what we ought to do in the same place. Paul did the same. When they stoned him, because he was witnessing to them, they threw him out of the city, they stoned him, he got up, recovered, went back in the city, and kept going. <laughs> that doesn't sound like he was going back to fight. The disciple realizes that it is his Lord's honor that is at stake in his life, and not his own honor. If we are dishonored by those to which we think we have to assert ourselves, then where is God in that equation? If God is our defense, then why would we defend ourselves? That's the point. People like to tell me, well, you know, no, that's not what God is saying. You're, you're supposed to, of course you would defend your family, your home, your, your country, your life, your situation. I don't see Jesus doing that. I haven't seen that in scripture yet. I haven't found that yet anywhere that God spoke to me and said, okay, Michael, you know, um, turning the other cheek and loving your enemies means that you can do that um, at a certain time and place, but not now, I want you to go out and kill somebody. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not what he told me or I'm sorry, but, you know, if they break into your home, you know, God isn't big enough to, you know, have you stand there and share with them the gospel or to witness to them. Because, after all, he's never done that in the modern era. You know, never mind about the people that, you know, recently broke out and, you know, was stealing and shooting people and had already shot some people and then took this woman captive and then she witnessed to him and guess what? <laughs> Excuse me? I think that if you look at all the hostage situations... And if you look at every circumstance closely, when you get past the news story and you find out the real story, you'll find that Christians that were in those predicaments 
usually were the ones that were calm, collected, and even sometimes witness to the ones that were persecuted. That is what Chambers is saying. Never look for right in the other man, but never cease to be right yourself. We are always looking for justice. The teaching of the Sermon on the Mount is never look for justice, but never cease to live it. In other words, it's not what the other person is doing, it's what you are doing. You are told by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount to do certain things, to be a certain way. If you don't agree with that teaching, then ask him. Because you can't do it yourself, even as Chambers said. It's either there or it's not. And when God has prepared you for it, you'll be just as shocked by your own reactions as <laughs> the person who's in your face. My wife has been amazed at the number of times that I have had people get in my face and I have been the calming force in their aggravation, though they may not have turned to you know the Lord or anything like that, yet they were calmed down and they stopped from either beating their wife or you know assaulting their children or doing any number of things and it didn't require me to lay hands on them and to you know bind them up and you know put them down or anything but rather just to be there as Jesus living inside me ministering to them in a way that they don't know now that can cost you your life there will be situations where as a missionary I know lots of missionaries that have died for their faith that's the price we pay for following Jesus if Jesus died and if we do since Jesus rose will we not too rise again with him you see Christianity isn't about sucking your thumb and taking in everything that you can get with your baby bottle Christianity is about denying yourself taking up your cross and following him not just to the good times but to the grave because the day will come when we will rise with him even as he suffered and died for us and rose from the dead.